why is nutrition so important with diabetes? So, um, diabetes, it, it can be hereditary. It can be lifestyle factors such as not exercising, uh, eating poor diet, or not knowing what type of foods to eat. It could be, um, it, it's multifactorial. So, it depends too. So, diabetes and nutrition go hand in hand because, um, when someone already has diabetes, the types of foods that they do eat can greatly affect their blood sugar. So, um, blood sugar in the blood comes, uh, can be increased due to the foods that we eat. So, um, just a little, um, uh, little bit of background about the foods. So, what I like to discuss with patients, first thing is how to identify carbohydrates because if a patient or a person doesn't even know what a carbohydrate is or why a carbohydrate is so important to know about diabetes, um, th it has to be the first thing that that is taught. Uh, if some patients want to learn about the pathophysiology, that could come, um, that could go hand in hand with the carbohydrate identification, but some, some patients aren't, um, don't want to know about the pathophysiology or aren't capable of, of understanding it, which is fine. If they're able to identify carbohydrates, then that's already half the battle right there. So I like to show this little um, diagram of foods that are non-carbohydrates and foods that are carbohydrates. So typically, what you'll see on the foods from the non-carbohydrate side will be your meat products, meat and proteins. You'll see your fats, and you'll see your non-starchy vegetables. So some patients might ask me, well, um, is that all I'm going to eat? So let me backtrack a little bit. So with carbohydrates, I never like to say, or with diabetes, I never like to say, these foods are good and these foods are bad because um, as we'll see later, there are carbohydrates that are, they can all fit into our food program or into our diet. It's just the amount that we eat or that diabetics eat that can cause problems for their blood sugar. So um, I don't want patients or we're not recommending or I'm not recommending patients just eat meat, uh, proteins or non starchy vegetables and fats all the time at every meal because carbohydrates are necessary for many different functions in our body. But what I am recommending um, is that people know what a non-carbohydrate is. So non-carbohydrate will be um, meats. So there'll be eggs, there'll be lean beef. And I recommend lean um, because we don't want patients having uh, or being overweight or having high cholesterol. So you'll see beef, you'll see chicken, you'll see fish, you'll see lamb, you'll see pork. Um, not starchy vegetables. Let's see, you'll see asparagus, you'll see um, Brussels sprouts, you'll see broccoli, you see cabbage, you see cauliflower, you see celery. And for the lipids or the fats, you'll see that there's um, two different types of fats, what we call healthy fats and unhealthy fats. The unhealthy fats are going to be your sausage, it'll be your bacon, it'll be your lard. Typically, those are what we call unhealthy fats. Although they don't raise your blood sugar, uh, typically, if they're not added with um, any honey or anything like that, then um, they don't have much of an effect on blood sugar. The healthy fats, we do recommend more often because they do have more benefits, such as avocado. You see olive oil. You'll even see um, a little bit of mayonnaise. Might be okay on a sandwich or in a tuna salad or um, different type of foods. And um, they typically don't um, cause high cholesterol, hyperlipidemia, and so forth. Now the carbohydrate side, Typically, there's three major groups that we show on the carbohydrate side. You see that your milk products, your starches and grains, and your fruits. 
That's why I don't like to say that carbohydrates are bad foods because, as you can see, there's fruits perfectly healthy, but they will have an effect on your blood sugar.